welcome back to my channel. So thank you so much for uh, coming back and being with me. I know that I have been out of the loop for a hot minute. I realize that I've had some health issues, so I had to deal with all that and some personal issues uh, in our lives uh, that weren't that great. So we had to deal with all of that, but I am back now. Thank you so much for putting up with me and for keeping, you know, a vigil on my channel to see, you know, when I'll be back. Uh, a number of you have reached out to me and you have been very, very nice about, oh, you know, just come back whenever you're ready, Maria. It's great. So I'm, I'm glad to be back. I'm going to catch you guys up. Uh, but first of all, if you are new here, hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining uh, you know, our little family here. Uh, I usually talk about uh, health and uh, food and healthy lifestyle and also uh, beauty for um, mature individuals, but also for individuals of all ages. Um, we just talk about skincare and beauty and such like that. So if that's something that you uh, gravitate to and you just want a really nice chill, uh, YouTube channel to watch and my idiosyncrasies while I'm talking and I talk about all kinds of topics, etc, etc. Uh, this is the place for you. So please come on by. Welcome, subscribe and let's get into this video. Okay, <clears throat> so today uh, I decided I'm just au naturel. I did fix my eyebrows. Um, just put a, a little eyebrow pencil on before I came on just for the sake of brevity. But uh, what I'm gonna do is uh, I have picked up a new foundation and uh, I have picked up a new to me eyeshadow. So we're gonna be putting that on. I am not a beauty guru by any means. I do not say that I'm a professional you know, makeup artist. So uh, don't, don't come at me about you know, my eye makeup because it's probably gonna look really crazy. But uh, I will talk to you about my life and my updates, so let's get started. Um, okay, number one, I'm going to put on the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. This is continues to be one of my favorite uh, primers. I've got two varieties. I've got this one that's a matte, and I've got another one that's uh, more of a glow. So if you're into the glow, go for the glow. If you're not, then, you know, use the matte. But this has been just amazing. It's It's like... It's like that wall primer that you put on, you know, to, to, you know, put the holes away from your, uh, from your walls and, and not have, you know, dings in your walls and stuff like that. What do they call that thing? Oh gosh. Leave me a comment below if you know what, what I'm talking about. It's that, um, what do they call it? I want to say shellac, but it's not shellac. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about, but this thing fills in, um, a lot of the crevices uh, in your face. So if you do have uh, some acne scarring, you know, minor, obviously it's not gonna uh, fill in a huge hole, but if you have like a, a minor uh, situation with acne and some scarring and um, discoloration, it will definitely kind of, uh, you know, make it smooth so that when you put on your foundation or your moisturizer or anything like that, it'll be like a smooth finish. So basically what I'm doing is I'm priming the canvas, the canvas of our face, right? So anyway, where have I been, guys? Um, I've had some issues with uh, my alkaline phosphatase numbers. And for those of you that don't know, alkaline phosphatase is one of these, um, I don't know what they call it, a hormone, an enzyme, I guess it's an enzyme, uh, that comes out of your liver and if your liver has some sort of issues with it uh, it starts to um, escalate so like a normal range let's just say is like 104 or 110 mine was 150 180 200 300 350 I mean every time the doctor would <clears throat> take my blood work up for my physical, it would just start climbing. Uh, and along with that, I think there's another one called AST. Uh, and I, I, I'll look it up here and I'll put it in the, in the comments below. It's another, you know, like enzyme that the liver makes that, that kind of goes, uh, haywire. So no one could understand what the situation was about or understand 
what was going on uh, with me. And, um, you know, we started getting a little, a little frightened about this because um, at first I was on cholesterol meds and they were like, well, maybe it's the cholesterol meds doing this to your liver because some cholesterol meds do uh, do weird things with your liver. So they were like, well, you know, get off the cholesterol meds and then we'll retest you. Well, they retested me and it didn't do a bit of difference. Uh, the other thing that I just got kind of got frightened about and I didn't want to um, do, not that I drink a lot or anything, I drink wine with dinner, uh, or if I went out to a uh, Mexican restaurant, I'd have a margarita. But I, I certainly was not a daily drinker or anything like that. And I got off of uh, drinking completely, thinking, okay, well, maybe this is affecting my liver in some way, or it's interacting with the cholesterol meds. And that wasn't the case. I got off, you know, and uh, it didn't really make a significant difference. Not that my doctors told me that it wouldn't anyway, but, you know, I just thought I'd be just conscious. Uh, hold that thought. Let me tell you what I'm going to put on. I'm going to try the number seven restore and renew multi-action serum foundation with a sunscreen SPF of 20, which is not high, but, um, yeah, I love this foundation and I'm trying to see what the number is, what my color is. It's on the box here. Uh, cool ivory. So here's the box. There is the, the word cool ivory. You can tell. And here it is. It's in a really nice glass bottle. Really, really pretty. Uh, and they should give a lot about. It's like 30 mil. So it's a really good, um, you know, amount. And I think I paid something like, I don't know, maybe $14, $15, maybe a little more. I think I got it at um, Walgreens. I think I got it at Walgreens. All right. So there's that. Um, yeah. So on and on we went. So I went to... Um, an infectious disease uh, doctor, they, they told me, well, it could be something to do with some kind of disease that your liver picked up. I'm putting a couple of drops there on this, this little buffer here, and I'm going to go ahead and I've got a mirror down here, so I'll be talking to you, but looking down, so just bear with me here. Um, yeah, so I, uh, I said, okay, well, you know, maybe it's something I picked up and you know, maybe it's something I ate or something I picked up or there's some kind of virus going around because the the only symptoms I was having is extreme fatigue and I couldn't keep um, if I if I worked you know eight hours or more a day and I did a lot of work and this was like um, starting already a couple of years it, it wasn't like just now in six months but a couple of years I've been noticing this if I worked a lot, and um, especially if I did overtime, I would be just absolutely drained. Like someone had unplugged me from a wall, like like my battery was run down, that kind of drain. Not necessarily sleepy drain, like I'm really sleepy, I want to go to sleep. No, drained as in I literally cannot move a muscle. All of my muscle... I. I extreme muscle fatigue let's just say that extreme muscle fatigue and no one could figure it out so we were thinking well infectious disease I picked up some kind of virus some kind of bacteria um, and I went to this infectious disease doctor here in Atlanta a very nice doctor you know ran 14 I kid you not 14 tubes of blood on me the first time and I was like oh my god uh, you know am I gonna have any blood left uh, you know once this guy is on am I you know doing this stuff am I am I ever gonna you know do this and have this blood left um, well you know I was okay maybe a little lightheaded but I was okay um, and it came back with all kinds of weird shit, you know, like my, my numbers on my liver were high and a couple of other markers, but everything like all autoimmune, he tested for all these autoimmune diseases that came back normal, came back negative. Um, he tested for hepatitis. He tested for Lyme disease. He tested for 
West Nile. He tested for AIDS. He tested for every single thing that you could possibly, possibly be tested for. And I became an anomaly. I literally became an anomaly where he didn't know, you know. And he said, um, well, the only other the only other pain that I was experiencing was through my lower hip, my right hip. So then he said, well, you know, you might have some um, hip area, bone area, density kind of thing, osteoporosis kind of thing. So I will um, recommend that you see a rheumatoid arthritis because maybe there's something going on with some other type of uh, rheumatoid type of thing. I don't even know. Um, so basically, he just kind of handed me off to another doctor. Uh, so then we went to see the rheumatoid arthritis guy. And he was like, well, I'm going to run um, a bone density scan on you. I'm just putting a little foundation here on my eyelids. That's basically the primer I'm going to use for it here. Um, he said, I'm going to you know, he, he ran his own set of tests and more blood workup. And he goes, I'm going to do a blood density scan. I'm going to do a, um, a other scan on me. I think a, a CT scan. I mean, I went for a couple of these bone, all, all around bone nuclear scans. I mean, it was just, I was in, I was in these machines like from out of space. Let me just tell you, like, I've never seen machines like this. You go in there. One of them, um, one of them was this nuclear test. Yeah. So I was shot up with some dye that made you basically all your veins glow in the dark, and then um, and then they would run this machine uh, around you, and it would pick up any anomalies you know so they were they were scanning for like cancer they were scanning for tumors god knows what they were scanning for but they were scanning for shit they wanted to find something literally find something on me um and that came back normal you know there was nothing really to look at um they did notice some inflammation around my hip area so you know again uh, rheumatoid arthritis guy said, yeah, you have some, you know, old age hip issues. Uh, I'm going to send you to physical therapy. Big whoop. Okay. So <laughs> there I go to physical therapy. And basically now he's kind of written me off like, okay, there's nothing wrong with this woman. What is going on here? You know, we know that she has this, um, weird thing going on with her liver, but other than that, we can't find anything else wrong with her. So here I am back to square one, um, trying to figure out, I'm opening up this package, by the way, trying to figure out what is going on with me. And we're getting um, frustrated. Um, I'm still having issues where I get really, really tired. Um, I'm trying to pace myself at this point. Uh, that's when I start getting off of YouTube and taking breaks because I'm like, okay, I work full time during the week and, and, uh, then I have to, you know, edit some of the YouTube videos and I have to sit here and, you know, maybe all of this is just draining me out. And honestly, emotionally, I wasn't like, uh, oh my gosh, you know, um, I, I just didn't have the emotional wherewith all to, to, present videos to think of topics i was just burned out as far as thinking about my health like 24 7 you know what am i doing what am i not doing what should i eat what shouldn't i eat what is is there enough exercise in my life i mean all of this goes through your mind and you're you're you know you just don't know where things are going no one's giving you a definitive answer nobody nobody right um so the next thing we did after the rheumatoid arthritis people, guy, doctor, um, I finally got, he finally said, well, <clears throat> there's something going on clearly with your liver. And the only people that know about liver is GI doctors. So gastroenterologists and hep hepatologists. So 
I'm going to recommend you to a GI doctor. Let's see what's going on with your gut. It could be something autoimmune still. We don't know, uh, but they'll know. So third doctor in, uh, finally they do some more testing. And this time um, he does some testing. He does say that, you know, my numbers are climbing clearly in my liver. Um, and there's another test that's going on, some autoimmune test. It's called AMA, autoimmune mitochondrial something, something. Uh, basically, if you've got a certain issue with your liver, and that came out kind of normal. So he said, well, I'm going to do one more test. It's called a liver biopsy, and that will be the definitive answer. I don't know why my camera is shaking. That's kind of weird. Hmm. Uh, it's the definitive answer as to what is going on with uh, your liver. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll get in there. We're definitely going to get in there. So that scares the bejesus out of me, right? So I'm thinking they're going to slice me open and take this sliver of liver, sliver of liver, and uh, go ahead and start, you know, God knows what they're going to find, right? All right, uh, I am going in with the e.l.f. eyeshadow. I picked up this bite size e.l.f. shadows, by the way, just to just to show you what I'm about to put on my eye as I'm talking. And uh, this one is, uh, what is this called? Does it have a name? Um, it's just like a matte one. I'm trying to see if there's an actual name for it. I don't see a name for it. Oh. Here it is. I love you a latte. Okay. Do you see it up there? I love you a latte. That's the name for it. And it comes in a little four pack. So I'm going to try this out. Never done it. Let's see what happens. If I look like a clown, sorry about it. Um, so basically I am, um, scheduled for this, uh, for this, um, I'm trying to take this tape off as I'm talking. I'm scheduled for this procedure and I go for all kinds of, you know, blood tests, make sure everything's okay. And then I have to go to the, the hospital. It's a, it's a, how do you call it? Um, a day procedure. They don't, they don't keep you nowadays. I don't know where you live, but in the United States, unless you're absolutely dying, they do not keep you overnight for any reason. Um, so, you know, you get your, you get your little physical thing done, whatever procedure it is, and then they send you on home to your merry way. So, um, so basically I had to go ahead and, uh, prep for that emotionally. Um, I, I did take off a day from work and, uh, you know, went in in the morning, they took some last second blood test to make sure everything was okay. I wasn't dying or anything. And then, uh, this other doctor came in, um, and they give you, what is that thing called? Thing that makes you sleepy or just out of it. Pro, pro, profanol, profanol, which scares the bejesus out of me. Anything that goes into my veins that is going to knock me out always scares me to death. Like, how is this going to affect me? Am I going to say something loopy and stupid? Am I going to be completely out um, and snoring, you know? And the nurses were kind of making a joke. They said, oh yeah, you should see your, you know, some of these patients that we have, they have the best sleep, uh, you know, ever. And um, we, we watch them and they're like snoring away, you know, as as they're under and I'm like, Oh, great. That's, that's all I need is you now people watching me snoring away. That's great. You know? Um, okay. I'm going to go in with the, that one there, number two. And I have no idea. These things have no names on them. So I'm just saying the, this one here, uh, second, second from the lightest. And, uh, yeah. So I was on this gurney and I had a, I had a top, gown on but you know no bra nothing else underneath um and I had uh let's see um I did have my underwear on yes I did because they didn't need to do anything down under um 
and then you know the doctor came in into this procedural room and he was all all of there for 10 minutes this guy uh I don't even I can't I couldn't even tell you his name I you know it wasn't it wasn't my gastroenterologist at all. It was uh, some other guy that his sole purpose in life is to jab you in the in the ribs and get a piece of meat out of you uh, from between your ribs, rib cage to uh, you know to get that. Um, they did shoot me with some sort of relaxing juice right prior, um, and then they and then when they were ready, when the doctor came in is when they gave me the propranol and and that's like um <laughs> for me uh and i'm not a druggie so i have no call tolerance to anything uh as far as you know alcohol or or brain stimulating or anything you you knock me with one of these things and i'm i'm done right so they they you know they say okay here here we go we're going to um put this in your vein right now uh, I felt relaxed but one of the other things um, I felt because they kind of asked me to roll over uh, to my side so that they could you know puncture right in there your mind and your body does not communicate anymore my mind understood what they wanted me to do but my body wasn't focusing so they had to kind of help me along and move me to the side so that he could get into you know range and they they usually look at um they look at a what do they call that ultrasound to focus in on where they want to puncture you and i know this sounds a little crazy you know but um it's for a good thing believe me you they don't want you don't want to have them randomly um, looking at areas or not knowing where they're going in with this this puncture equipment and uh, yeah you you really do want to be um, under the influence of something to show um, to, to because you, you see it I mean I saw it out of the corner of my eye I tried not to look but I'm gonna I'm gonna show you I'm not exaggerating the needle was this long it looks like a gun it looks like um almost looks like one of those fire guns you know where you shoot for a candle it's got a little i guess mechanism and it's it's got a tube about this big and then attached to it it's got a needle like that okay so yeah you don't you want to you, you don't want to see that when you're sober but when you're not sober it doesn't it, do, it doesn't really register in your mind right um, so then they just told me you know sit very still and hold my breath you know suck in my breath and sit still and you know blah 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 and all you hear is two mega that literally that's the sound you hear it's like a staple sound if you could think of a, a, a sound for a stapler gun, that's what it is. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna just kind of fluff out the tops here and make it a little softer. Uh, and I didn't feel a thing. Honestly, guys, I did not feel a thing. Uh, it was over so quickly. I'm telling you, this guy was in there for all of um, ten minutes making his extraordinary amount of uh, hourly wage. Um, did his little shotgun thing, looked at the um, looked at the ultrasound, you know, the nurse kind of like told him preliminary what, what, what her findings were because she, she did the preliminary, you know, ultrasound and basically told him the coordinates that she, she found that apparently were where they needed to go. And he concurred with her. He kind of looked at the screen to make sure that, yeah, that's that's where we need to be. And then um, ripped open this, this staple gun is what I'm going to call it. 
um, from a plastic wrap. Everything is pre, you know, everything nowadays is sterilized in a plastic uh, shrink wrap. So they just they pull things apart and take it out, right? And uh, two of those little sounds later, I was done. They put a um, pressure pressure bandage on my uh, on my rib rib area. Ooh, that's coming out pretty good. What do you think, guys? Huh? I think that's coming out pretty good. I like that color, by the way. I really do. Um, and then uh, I was told that I cannot leave the hospital. They wheeled me into a recovery area room. It's, it looks like an ICU area where there's um, multiple... Okay, so they wheel the gurney into this... I call it like a excuse me, like a garage setting where they just wheel you in there and you have a little, you have a little TV and they set up, um, the, uh, they hook you up to like, um, a heart rate monitor, by the way, that's on, on you the entire time, the procedure's being done and a blood pressure cuff, which I forgot to mention that's on you. That was the most annoying thing. The blood pressure cuff takes your blood pressure every five minutes automatically it's on your it's on your arm and it just squeezes the f out of your arm until your eyes bug out every five minutes and then it takes your blood pressure so that's all actually one of the most annoying things ever ever um so they wheel me into this recovery room my husband's there for that process and um i think i'm gonna go in well, okay, let's do the darker one for like a little eyeliner here. I'm just trying to tell you what I'm doing. Um, so they, they wheel me into this. My husband is called in to say everything's okay. I've survived. And, um, you know, he's there for, uh, it's supposed to be four hours. I'm, I'm taking this thing here. Four hours uh, of monitoring me to make sure that um, I don't bleed out or or something happens with my blood pressure or anything like that. I'm going to try to do a little liner thing here. And, um, yeah, so basically all we did there was sit around and, um, I was allowed to, uh, drink and eat a little snack because, uh, I've, I think I forgot to tell you guys, this is obviously on an empty stomach. When you go in for a procedure like this, this is not, um, you don't have a steak meal the night before. Uh, they they definitely um, let me turn this over here at light. Uh, yeah, you definitely go in with an empty stomach, and uh, not that I was famished or anything, because I think you are just. Uh, oh, that looks pretty. That looks really pretty. Look at that. Um, you're just you know you're so out of it. You don't really realize it, but. I did have some water. They were very nice, the nurses, by the way. And um, I did have some water, and I did have some um, fruit cup, like a compote fresh fruit cup that I asked for. Uh, I don't know what other choices. I think some other choices were like orange juice or a cookie, um, water, uh, fre fresh compote, you know, all of that. So I, I tried to do... As, as well as I could under the circumstances and um, so my procedure was I think over by like 1 30 so we had to be there till about 5 uh, to monitor the my vitals and then once I once they knew that my vitals were stable you know they would let me go so yeah in a nutshell that was it um, went home uh, I think I took that was Friday, yeah. So I took, obviously I was in bed Saturday, Sunday. They told me not to lift anything heavy, um, not to bend down, not to do anything, not to stretch my arms above my shoulder. So, you know, don't do any of this um, to, to strain any of the, you know, the thing. Uh, there was no bleeding, there was not, uh, there's no scar, there's nothing. It's literally, it was like a little puncture and then that was it, it was done. Um, so that procedure went very well. I just had to be, you know, careful and not overdo it. And then, um, 
in about, I don't know, a couple of weeks time, uh, they sent the lab results over to uh, my doctor. And uh, that's when they called me back and uh, for a follow-up visit to discuss the results of all of that. And that's really where I got diagnosed with, and I'll, um, I'll put it down here so you guys can read up on it or know about it uh, with, it's called, uh, so the acronym is PBC and it's primary biliary cholangitis. And I'll, and I'll put it down here so you guys can, you know, type it into Google and go at it, uh, which I had never heard of before. And it's basically a very rare, ultra rare, as in, you know, a population of one in one in 700 gets it, if that could be as much as one in a thousand um, people get it. And it, it is an autoimmune disease that basically your body attacks the primary biliary bile ducts of your liver and slowly um, kills them off and your bile ducts make bile and your you need bile to eat and digest your food and and get all the nutrients in one of the things that i also started to notice just at, at fyi is that i was uh losing weight which is another scary thing because you don't know why you're losing weight i certainly was not really changing what i was eating i wasn't attempting to lose weight um i had gotten out of off of you know any alcohol but again not to the not to the point where oh my god it, it is so significant that i you know i was drinking a bottle of vodka every day and now i wasn't so obviously i was so puffed up that i was losing weight now water weight wasn't anything like that um so we couldn't f figure out why I, I have been losing so much weight well come to figure out when you have this type of um autoimmune i'm trying to show you guys here this but um here maybe i do that okay um when when you have this autoimmune situation going on and your bios are not really working that well your um so what you're eating is not uh, being absorbed, okay, by the cells in your body, the nutrients. So basically you're eliminating, um, when you are eliminating in, 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 the, in the restroom, uh, food that is really like nutrients that are not coming, going into your body. Um, and therefore, you know, you're, you're losing the weight. Um, and I know, you know, this would be a godsend to a lot of people, but it's very frightening. It is very frightening when you don't know what's going on in your body and you're eating healthy, you're eating salads, you're eating the healthy foods, whatever you need, and your body's just not reacting. You know, I would get on the scale and every time I got on the scale, I would be two to three pounds lower than before without doing anything. Wasn't exercising. I was walking around. I was a little more active at work because um, I had some extra duties that I have to perform now. But uh, not to the not to the fact of losing. Uh, literally between the time I was diagnosed to the time I am, I am now uh, over twenty pounds has has gone off of me I am I am shockingly thin shockingly thin uh, not not in a good way okay like you know really sick looking thin and I don't enjoy it um, you know uh, things are falling off of me um, my um, my clothes don't fit right I just I don't enjoy being this thin I, you know I've lost my boobs and my tush and you know i just i just look haggard is what i'm saying um so there there's really not much else that um 
I could have done. Okay, I've just done a tiny little wingy thing here. Um, and yeah, so where was I? I was talking about, oh yeah, so, um, so we got called in and that's when they told us what it was and we just both looked at each other like, what is this? And, and he said, you know, um, in the old days before medication, there was not much anyone could do about it. And basically, uh, you just basically, once your bile ducts didn't work anymore and they were, they were destroyed by your autoimmune system, you would need to get a um, liver transplant. So, you know, when they said that, I was like, you know, that, that, you know that's a shocker uh, when someone tells you that. Uh, that's not something you wanna hear. So we're like, okay, well, you know, this is 2022. This is not 1970 or 60. So what's the game plan here? And um, they put me on a medication called uh, Ursodiol, Ursodichloric, Ursod, Ursodiol Acid. It's Urso, U-R-S-O is how it's referred to. And it basically goes in there and starts to substitute and make it does a number of things it it, it makes um uh bile uh it makes it easier for your liver to to produce bile and it uh it lubricates the bile ducts so that they don't shrivel up and die uh, so that if your if your autoimmune is attacking them um it just it's almost like a protectant uh, it coats them in some way that this is my uninformed uh, layman's terms of trying to understand what it does but that this is what it does okay it's one of the only um, medications there's one or two others but that's in an emergency if um, this first medication doesn't work and some some patients are called non responders where their um, alkaline phosphatase numbers are not going down um, even on Urso. Um, luckily, so far, my numbers have been trending down with the caveat that um, <laughs> on top of everything else, uh, I had COVID, the, you know, all of our family went through that last month. And <clears throat> I was about to go to my, um, my GI doctor, I had an appointment uh, for follow-up and I had to cancel because of COVID and they were very concerned because apparently COVID um, uh, does something to the liver. It can affect the liver. Um, so my liver numbers can trend up because of it. Again, so I went on, uh, I'm, I'm starting to live at the blood work laboratory you know I go there like once a month or once every six weeks they're starting to know me by name um, because he will just order a new hepatic panel to see where my numbers are if they're trending up or down so he had concerns so he said I have to adjust your uh, medication I might need to adjust it because after you get over your um, you know your, your your situation your illness uh, you know, uh, your liver might be affected. I might have to adjust it. So luckily it, um, my numbers hadn't gone down as nicely as he would have liked, but they didn't go up as high either. So they kind of were treading water. Uh, and I do have, um, an appointment with him at the end of this week. As a matter of fact, um, I don't know when I'll put up this video, but, uh, probably, you know, today's Sunday so I'll probably put it up in the next couple of days but by the end of this week I'll be going to see him so he'll let me know um, what the next steps are but um, I have been doing good I have been feeling um, not that I felt awful but I've been feeling a little better as far as my uh, my energy is concerned uh, I don't feel as run down I haven't had as much bouts of fatigue as I normally do I think I've had one bout since I've been on Urso, which is a good thing. Um, the other thing that 
I'm going to try to put some more light on here. Here, There we go. Uh, and let me, hold on, let me do the lights up here. There we go. The other thing that um, I've noticed, and sorry for the TMI or anything, but um, the only other thing is my gastro, uh, my, my tummy has not been good. Um, I've been having a lot of uh, trips to the bathroom, let's just say. I don't want to get too TMI about it, but um, I haven't been able to get far away from a bathroom, and that's my biggest fear, too, uh, is doing any traveling, because um, you have to make stops along the way, because at any given moment, you have the urge to go, and um, that's one of the side effects of Urso, as you're starting to get, uh, your body starts to get used to it, and it's starting to help your liver function. Um, in a way, it's kind of overcompensating, and it's releasing all this bile into your system, and then all of a sudden, you really need to go. I mean, uh, you know, it's like after you have a meal, you could time me, and within 20 to 30 minutes, I got to go really bad. Like, I can't even finish a sentence before I got to go. Um, there's my um, flashes. Uh, and that, let me tell you, is such a downer. It just, you, you really feel so um, disabled, you know, because I, I've had to, like, postpone getting together with people to go out for dinner or even a lunch with friends uh, or co-workers because, you know, the embarrassment of just sitting there and all of a sudden you've got to rush to the restroom. And I'm not a great, I'm not a great public restroom person. You know, uh, I will do whatever not to go into a public restroom. It's just one of those things that I'm like, mm, no, no. And I've always been like that. And for me to have to, there's no, there's no option. I mean, there's no way I could make it home in time or anything. Um, and have, having to go in a public restroom is just, uh, it's just not a happy place for me. Not a happy place at all. Um, so that's the only, that's the only downside. But, um, I have been on a very good, Facebook support group, by the way, that that is uh, part of this autoimmune. Um, so it's PBC uh, Facebook group, and I've gotten a lot of other uh, feedback about what I should do, shouldn't do, or anything. Um, and one of the things that you're supposed to believe it or not take is uh, plenty of fiber. So I've bought mu mus mus mucilix mucilix. I don't know. It's one of those fiber powders that you put in drink. It tastes like tang and it bulks you up. So that, that's helped me tremendously. Um, that really has helped me tremendously um, to make my life a little bit more normal. But as you can probably guess, with everything going on, um, this year has been a challenge, uh, to say the least. And, uh, you know, just trying to keep it together and trying to um, go on with my life and basically keep my job and keep everything moving forward um, has been a challenge. So I've been taking a lot of breaks. I know when to, I know when to stop now. I know when to break myself. Oh, look at those doll eyes, huh? That's pretty good. I like this. Um, I just, I just, uh, you really start to realize what is important in your life and what can, um, can be put on hold a little bit. And, you know, my main focus has always been my family and I had to deal with all of that. Where is the bottom to this thing? I am looking for it all over. Here it is. Uh, you know, so not feeling well. And not knowing the outcome of what was going on, I'm like, mm, I don't know if I'm going to be on, you know, YouTube a lot because I, I just don't know. 
what to talk, what to disclose and all of that. And I'm ready to disclose it because I think it is so important for people to understand this, uh, this autoimmune disease. It is so hidden and it is so rare. I mean, it, it's like, it's like if I won the lottery, you know, in a bad way, I can't win the lottery, but I've got this disease that it's not common. It's not diabetes. It's not cancer. It's not you know, uh, an, an, another autoimmune disease that um, has been thoroughly researched and that there's so many uh, 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 medications and things and support groups out there. There really isn't for PBC. There really, really isn't a lot of information out there because it's so rare that um, they, they say a, a, a hepatologist or a gastroenterologist will see maybe one or two patients in their entire career with this. Now think about that. They see people on the daily and that yes, there's cirrhosis of the liver and yes, there's other gastrointestinal, there's Crohn's disease, there's IBS, there's so many other daily things, you know, that they see but they will not see someone with primary biliary cholangitis for probably their entire careers. And there are specialists that um, focus on this. Of course, they're all researchers. And there's, I think, um, some, some kind of research group up by um, Durham, North Carolina, so by Duke University, uh, maybe that does some of this research. There's There's some clinics, you know, and research groups around the world and around the United States that deal with it, but not, not, a, not, not every doctor will know about it or even know what to do about it or even has heard of it seriously. Um, blush, I'm using the matte blush Palladio uh, and it is called, hmm, what is it called? Herbal, herbal matte blush. I don't know the color of this, if that's, the color or not but yeah that this is it it's a really pretty like a purpley kind of look fuchsia maybe yeah so I'm luckily my uh my gastroenterologist knew about it has heard about it I didn't um I didn't ask him you know how much he knows about it there we go um but definitely he seems to know what he's doing and he's one of the leading gastroenterologists here in Atlanta. As a matter of fact, he is, and this is also going to come up, but he is one of the top um, ones that does the colonoscopies here. He's like colonoscopy city. So I know that's going to be coming up soon. Not looking forward to that. Um, but yeah, he's, uh, he's definitely... I hear a lot of noises down here. I don't know what happened. Um, he's definitely, uh, you know, knows his stuff. So I'm, I'm happy with him. I know I'm rambling, but I think it's important enough for everybody to realize that they have to be their own advocate, and you have to know as much as you can without, without scaring the, the poop out of you. Literally, um, you have to get on. You have to do your due diligence you have to do you hear this noise seriously i can't do a video without having noise around my house uh so you have to do your own diligence and you have to you know be your own advocate and everything last thing my lipstick um and it's the milani and it is nude cream so i'm just going to show you that there you go as i'm talking uh yeah you have to be your own advocate and and your family too and um read 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 i got some books off of amazon to read um i'm looking at some youtube videos of other patients or other doctors that have posted uh, and again i am vigilant about how old the videos are because you don't want to look at um, videos that have been done five or six or seven years ago because 
new technology and new research and everything coming out, you want to be up to date with the latest and not have uh, things scare you. But I'm going to go on with my life. I'm going to live the best life I can. I'm going to eat well. Uh, I will be focusing back on YouTube and I will be um, putting up videos again for um, new skin care and new health care and what you can and cannot do with, you know, focusing in on this type of disease and everything. There are certain things that you shouldn't be touching um, when you're eating as far as food or, or even putting on your face or using. So I am going to be definitely vigilant about all of that and make sure that I get um, everything done, uh, you know, uh, and focusing on that and then bringing the information to you guys. And I think it'll be beneficial for a, a number of us, you know, not just someone with my disease, but maybe some other autoimmune disease. So as before, anything that I discover and anything that I uh, live through, I want to bring to you guys. And that has always been my main focus for this um, channel. Okay. Anyway, uh, I hope you like this uh, makeup. Let me go ahead and my lights are literally dying on me. Hang on. Uh, yeah, this one light has just done it in for me. But hopefully you'll be able to see what I've done here. Um, and I think it's a really, really pretty foundation, by the way. I love the way this foundation holds together on my face. Uh, I love the, the slight glow of it. And I really like the e.l.f. matte, you know, primer. I hope I did a good job on my eyes. Leave me comments below and let me know if I did a good job on my eyes. I mean, I did the best I can with what I've got to work with at my age. So, you know, but I think it's a really nice... Um, you know, it could be a day look. Um, you know, if you want to go a little darker or anything like that, va va voom, you could certainly jazz it up. But um, I think I do like my eye, and then uh, and then the blush is just just a flush of cheek. I think it's absolutely a beautiful color. I go to this blush like all the time, and I'm a nudie girl, so I just put my little nudie lipstick on. And I'm ready for the day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if it ran a little bit long, but I, you know, I really didn't want to um, shorten anything, and I wanted to really uh, disclose everything and uh, get you guys up to speed on me. So I know if you want to break it down into chunks, go ahead and, you know, just view it for a few minutes and then save it in your list and then go back and view it because I think it'll be, you know, interesting for everybody. I love you guys very much. I will be back online here. I will be putting up videos as I, as I can, as I'm able to bear with me if I'm having some bad times with it. Uh, but I really love you guys and I miss you all. And, um, again, please subscribe and thumbs up my videos and, um, I will see you in my next video. I love you. Bye.